All right, how y'all doing today? Uh, I want to just quickly go over the GBP USD chart. Uh, today's range, 134.7 pips. So let's take a look, see exactly what happened, why it moved so strongly from top to bottom, or should I say bottom to top because it finished bullish today. All right, so here I got us on replay mode. Uh, today's candle ended up printing here, but let's take a look to see what we got going on at this point. All right, so daily, clearly on an uptrend. Cool. What do we got here? We got highs here, highs there. All right. We broke here, right? This was our candle that broke it. Now we've came back to retest those highs. All right. So now we got a do doji candle, spinning top candle, whatever you want to call it, on that zone. So what is that telling us? That's telling us we're likely, not guaranteed, but likely going to have a bullish day. All right. So now that we know that, let's go down a time frame. All right. Actually, quickly, let's just mark up our highs right here, right? And that's our daily range, right? Our daily swing, I should say, right? These are all our daily swings right here. So those are our daily swings. So is it more probable for price to come back down to here? or to go up to there. Personally, a lot less pips here. This is a lot of work for anybody trying to short it to make it down to these lows here. All right, like I said, broke our highs pretty strongly, had two bearish days to come back to retest. However, this was a nice indecision candle on that zone. All right, so now, I just want to mention quickly, if you are expecting a bullish day, how often is it that you will see a candle open and go straight up? It doesn't happen very often, all right? Obviously, you're going to have those days that do. I'm not saying it doesn't happen, but the more likely scenario is that you will see a wick at the bottom of that candle. All right. So you're going to see price, price pull back and create that wick before it starts moving back bullish for the day. So it will start off bearish. That bearish candle will turn into a bullish one and leave a wick at the bottom. All right. So now, now that we're expecting price to possibly pull back a bit, right? Where could we expect price to come to? Well, I don't think it's gonna come all the way here. However, let's take our Fibonacci. Let's see where it is. All right, that's our 50%. Let's add on our 618. So what does that line up with? Well, lines up pretty good. With these lows here, I can even pull it back, add these in here, whatever you want to do. All right. But whatever it is, we got this zone in here. All right. So now let's mark up our four hour time frame. We got lows here and highs here. Remember, we're expecting a bullish day. That is our bias, all right? However, we do expect price to come back. And what we're going to actually expect is for these lows to get liquidated first. And I already know what happened. And that is exactly what happened. I'm not going to lie to you. That is what happened, all right? Um, but yeah, so we are expecting that, right? These ones are going to hold because that was our initial. 
move up. That was the one that broke it, right? We broke our trend right here, or our sorry, our uh, our highs. We broke our highs right here. So we got a lot of money sitting on these ones. Not so much these. I'm sure they added a little bit, but this was our big money. All right. So these ones may get liquidated. Let's go down to a one hour time frame. You can see you know, a slight head and shoulders pattern, whatever you want to call it. Now I want to put that on my chart. So this is my personal moving average. I set this. It's a multi time frame moving average. So you can set it to whatever time frame you want. It'll display the same length on whatever time frame you choose. Like I'll jump up to a four hour. Note how it's within this range here. Right? Why did it disappear? Oh, yeah, there, there it is. All right. It's within that range. Drop down to a 15. Where is my moving average? All right. Beautiful. Still within that range, right? All right. Cool. So now, what do we got here? Well, we got our mid range, right? Our high is right here. That's where we're sitting. We're sitting below this right now. So to start the day, if you wanted to take a trade, would have been a decent trade right here. We're below my moving average. By the way, if you want to know the settings I use, I did make a video on it. I'll leave a uh, link in the description below. But uh, yeah, it's how I set my moving averages. Um, I don't use basic, you know, 20, 50, 200, whatever, whatever, right? I set them specifically to show a certain length of time based on a certain amount of data that I personally want to see. This one here is one day of data. All right. It's actually a 1440 period moving average on a one minute chart. So I see every single tick on here for a hundred or sorry, 1,440 minutes, which is exactly one day. If you count the minutes in a day, you'll see this is exactly 24 hours. All right. Anyway, let's get to it. So we had a nice little range here. We're below our moving average. We created a lower high here. All right. So as we said, we expected the day to start bearish. What do we expect? These lows to get taken out. All right. So let's go forward a bit. Boom. Anybody that wanted to go short, they got in and got out right here. As I said, these guys wanted to stay in this move. So yeah, we did push a little bit further down. However, their stops are further than these guys' stops. All right. So what happened? We had this bullish engulfing candle on the one hour time frame. All right. And then another bullish move. So jump up to a four hour chart. Just a wick. That's all it is. So that is a very, very bullish move. All right. So we're expecting bullish day, right? So now we got a bullish signal. All right. A four hour chart, major pin bar, one hour chart bullish engulfing however on the one minute or one hour time frame we are sitting still below my moving average so what can we do about that let's go down to a lower time frame all right so now i would have just been getting up around this time all right i would have came in well not quite yet but I would have came in, I would have looked at this, I would have seen, all right, cool. We came into our zone, we look, liquidated these levels here, right? Now we broke back in, right? So clearly whoever is buying this market right now didn't want it lower than this. Came down, went straight back up. All right, they do not want it lower. 
All right, push right into our 618, 50% zone. Beautiful, beautiful. All right. Now, we have these lows here, right? Right there. So we are going to wait for this to actually break. I'm going to get rid of this quickly just so you can see a little bit better. All right. So we want our moving average to break because clearly we've been respecting it, right? We ranged within it for a bit, broke a little higher, created a new high here, still below our daily high though, however, all right? But yeah, we're respecting it, respecting it, respecting it, fell off hard. So now we want this to break, all right? So it's about getting close to 6 a.m. I would have been getting to my charts about now. So I would have been looking at this and seeing, all right, cool, we broke this, uh, shot back up. Now we're ranging, respecting this level here, these lows, with this low here, these highs, and now we're ranging within this zone. So if we can break above this, We'll be safe to take it long. All right. So wait it out, wait it out, wait it out. Boom. There we go. Now, do we need to wait for a retest of the zone? We don't have to. Sometimes it is better to, but with this rejection here, and the fact that this is a small time frame, all right, we're not that far, right? We really aren't that far. It's a small time frame. We're only what seven pips in. That's not too bad. So we can take our long position right here. All right, we could aim for these highs. This stops below. So let's do 25 pip stop loss. and a 50 pip target all right could go for a two to one right however we could go for this up here a three to one all right could go for that as well because we clearly if i zoom out farther we have a range here right we have a range this was our move down let me put this on quickly we had to move down move up move down made it to the bottom of the range in three moves all right so now what do we expect? Well, really and truly, we expect a move up, a move down, and a move back up. I already know what happened. That clearly didn't happen. But that's what we would really expect to happen. All right. And I, I guess it kind of did. You'll see in a second. It did kind of happen. But yeah. Let's go forward with this. So anybody trying to look for a retest of this zone here didn't get it. All right. But now, what time are we? We're about 8 o'clock. I believe as soon as New York session opened, we did get it. Yeah, there we go. We got a little pullback. All right. So anybody that missed this break, they could have got in here. I know a lot of people probably tried shorting this. I guarantee you a lot of people tried shorting this. But <laughs> yeah, that probably hurt. All right. Um, yeah, so if you wanted to, uh, you're looking at these highs right here. Boom. We broke up. 
broke above it, right? Now we came back, retesting that. And if you look at it, that's mid zone. Take my 50% right here. Boom. Exactly 50%. All right. So that's mid level. We broke it, came back to retest it. Could have set position right here. Right. Just below that zone. Let's go. Ah, whatever. Seven and a half pips. Six to one. Beautiful. Uh, let's go a little higher. Yeah, uh, whatever. Let's try get this accurate here. There we go. Sure. Seven and a half to one. All right. It is what it is. So now let's see what happened. Okay. Started off slightly in a loss, whatever, but it took off. All right. So now, oh shoot, I wanted to go back one candle. Anyway, ignore this candle. We had these highs here. How many people you think tried shorting it right there? You ignore this. I can guarantee you thousands, maybe even millions of people tried shorting it right here. All right. But that's not the top of our range. The top of our range is right here. That would have been a good target for these people if they didn't want to be greedy, right? It, maybe if they want to take partial profits just in case. Just in case. But um, yeah, that's not the top of our range. This is the top of our range. All right. So what happened? Well, Price kept going. Boom. All right. So, as you can see, in range trading, you want to be very careful where your actual range is. All right. You don't want to try a short in the middle of a market. Unless, like I said, when we were first starting off the day, we expected a bearish move first, and then we expected it to push up. So in that case, taking a quick short, just for a quick scalp, all right, cool, no problem. But if you're expecting a bullish day, and you're starting to move bullish, don't be shorting it. All right. If you've came to the bottom of your range and you pushed up with a huge pin bar with a bullish engulfing candle, a break above trend, a break above range, a break above the moving average, like so many things, so many things were telling you to buy this and it wasn't going short today. All right. Anyway, I posted a uh, an idea. I'm going to clear this quickly because we're done now about this. But I posted an idea on GBP USD at the end of the day, about 4 p.m. Eastern time. All right. Um, what do we got here? So GBP USD in range, low risk trade. All right, trade, 15 pip stop loss, 60 pip target, one risk, four reward. All right, now what did I see? Well, I seen that we were at the top of the range. Yeah, GU made it to the top of the range today after a very strong bullish move. Very strong bullish move. 134.7 pips from the bottom to the top. That was our range. All right. Most recent highs were liquidated, but still holding from our highs, still holding our highs from last week. All right. These ones, these shorts got liquidated. Anybody tried shorting 
anywhere here, anything less than a 20 pip stop loss, you got taken out. That's it. You're out of this trade. Big money is sitting here because this is the top of our range. All right. So that's why we moved up to this level. We had a, our first actual decent rejection. Then we created this double top that I saw. All right. So that was another reason why I actually entered the trade. Like that was my entry signal. All right. But other things that I saw are point of control. All right. Our session point of control, which is um, horizontal data of volume. All right. If you want to learn more about it, it's, uh, it's a good topic to know. And maybe I'll do a video on it at one point. But this shows you volume at certain price levels rather than based on time. All right. So earlier in the day, this one right here, you can see it's a little bit longer. This was our point of control at one point. Or sorry, it was this one right here. You can barely see it because it faded out. But it was matched up with yesterday. All right. That was our point of control right here. All right. But now we have our point of control up at the top of this range, which means that big money that originally shorted here, they don't want it to go higher. Yeah, they don't want it to go higher. Sorry, that was my dog. He's whining. It's almost supper time. But yeah, anyway, um, they don't want it to go higher. So they started putting orders in to keep it below at the top of this range. All right. What did we have with our time based volume? Well, our highest volume node that you can see right here was exactly at our high of the day. All right. Our highest volume node right up here at the top of our day. What else did we have? Bull run com completed. Yes, buddy. Yes, buddy. I hear you. Give me a minute. All right, bull run was completed bottom to top in eight hours. Eight hour ATR was 52.8 pips. <laughs> the, bull, <laughs> the run was 134.7. All right, so we overextended that by 81.9 pips. That's heavy. That's like really, really strong. We were only supposed to move 52.8 pips ATR. That would have been like around here somewhere. We went well past that. All right. So after a strong move like that, you do expect price to retrace. All right. And that's why I'm being very um, conservative, looking for a target within that mid range, right? Retrace back, possibly a move back up because this was so strong, right? This was so strong. I'm not expecting it to come all the way back to here. If it does, cool. I'll take it. I won't close my position until I actually see like this is a loose take profit. You know, they're, they're adjustable depending on what price action is doing once you get to that point. Right. But anyway, so now we had our double top. I entered this trade looking for a retrace back to the mid range. See what happens. If we keep holding only time will tell. All right. If we do get stopped out of this trade, however, right, let's say it does break above our highs here what will we be expecting well we'll be expecting price to come up break through it retrace back into it and then we'll be looking for longs again to continue that move higher all right so i left a little note here shorting at the top of the range provides a low risk high reward trade Try to avoid taking trades in the middle of the range as like what happened today, price continued up very strongly and would have stopped out anybody, anybody trying to short in the middle of this range. All right. So we'll see what happens at this point. What are we doing? We're just ranging. Hasn't done nothing yet, but we haven't even broke our highs from today. Our stop loss is above the range. So we'll, we'll see what happens. All right. Hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, hope you learned something. 
Hope you can use a couple things that I pointed out in here. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to my channel if you like the content. And uh, yeah, happy trading. Take care.